Okay, I'm really big on conditioning with a purpose. Um, I don't believe in just running to run and running sprints. So we'll end every um, defensive practice with pursuit drills. We also do every drill under double whistle. The double whistle basically means I've got the ball, you came up, you just tackle me. Now, at the high school level, we don't take them to the ground, but if you took me to the ground, that's fine. I blow the whistle. You as a coach got to judge your team's effort and your team's speed. The high school level, I go 1,001, 1,002, and I blow a second whistle. On that second whistle, all the other 10 kids better be there chopping their feet. If they're not, they all do 14 push-ups. Why do we do 14 push-ups? Because we have to play 14 games to get the section title game. Sometimes, though, I go 1,003. Sometimes I go 1,004. It's really hot. Kids give me good effort. I'll give them a little break. If it's a long run and I know that corner needs extra time and he's sprinting, I'll just wait till he gets there if everybody's sprinting. So they're all there chopping their feet. The leader of every defense screams out, 11 helmets, meaning the 11 defense players. And the, player, the other 10 players repeat, one poor soul, and then they sprint back. And they get ingrained why we always sprint. If you're doing double whistle in every seven on seven, perimeter run, run fits, all these drills I've been showing, you're always doing double whistle, and then you end every practice with a pursuit drill. It doesn't matter which pursuit drill, I'm giving you some variety. You're gonna get a lot of conditioning in, which buys you practice time instead of spending 20 minutes. I mean, you only get two hours a night, three nights a week, and you're gonna spend 20 minutes running sprints when you could do it in practice and make yourself a better defensive football team. So let me show you the pursuit drills. Panther pursuit is the pretty classic one. I either can throw a pass or pitch the ball and have a running back run it. And basically, all the players should line up with their pursuit drills. Now, this isn't really accurate because the outside linebacker actually should cross the face and be sitting there chopping his feet. Okay? The corner then crosses his face. So they're the only two players that are probably in the backfield. Maybe the DN. Maybe the DN could cross the face. If he doesn't, the DN is the first one right here, okay? So you got DN, probably play side, inside linebacker. Uh, now you're splitting here. It's D tackle, other linebacker, okay? Um, probably should have the free safety somewhere there. I probably didn't draw the safety early enough, okay? Then you got your backside players, and this is the backside corner. They should all be lined up. What you're teaching kids is, is that if I'm running and there's one of my teammates in front of me and we're both running towards you, I will just naturally learn without thinking about it to peel off and go next level. And they naturally learn their angles and their learning pursuit drill. The way the drill counts is all 11 players have to cross the rabbit's face, either the sweep, sweeper or the pass. If they don't cross their face, they do it again. They just keep going until they all cross their face. Once cross face, they come out and get a new defense in. Coaches. You don't need everybody in your team in shape. I only rep this with the first and second string defense. The third string guys don't do this at the end of practice. They're only going to play their five plays, the way the league requires at, on Saturday. So they don't need to be doing these drills to get in five plays. And you're wasting practice time. Make sure your first and second string guys are getting the reps. So that's a, just Panther pursuit. OK, team pursuit. Have people here who can catch a football, OK? So everybody's in their position, they chop their feet. I say, up, down. They all do an up, down. While they're doing up, down, I throw the ball to one of these four players. So now they come up, they're learning how to find the ball. They all sprint. Let's say I threw it to him. I'm going to number these, because you're going to make three throws. They all sprint. They all line up behind them. So it goes lineman, 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 lineman. Your mic backer's in front, OK? Backer. Backer, 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 free safety, corner, corner. They line up like they do the defense huddle. He screams 11 helmets. They go one, four, soul. They three claps. They sprint back on their back, helmet to me. Now I throw another pass, and I yell, get up. And they get up, find the ball. They come running over here, huddle up, 11 helmets, one, four, soul. Sprint back on their back. Then I throw a ball. They don't know which one I'm going to throw to now. Let's say I threw it to this one. They sprint over there, 11 helmets, one football, sprint back. When everyone's on a knee, in their position, facing forward, we stop the watch. This is a time drill. At the high school level, a minute's a lot. A team could do this in about 30 to 45 seconds. So I think for the youth level, a minute, maybe a minute 15, 
basically what will happen is you gauge it. When you get a really good time, now you have a barometer for the rest of the year that they got to beat. If you're not liking their times, bring their coaches in. At peewee level, they got little bitty legs, right? Don't have the coat so wide. Bring the coaches in a little bit. And that's a good pursuit drill. And they learn how to find the ball, OK? So we call that team pursuit. I like that because it's a watch. So now when the second defense comes in, they have a time to beat. You make it competitive. So each team goes three times, take the average. The winning team sits out, and the other team's got to go again. So you have a winner and a loser.